Hello, I'm Belinda Cronell and welcome to the Justices of the Peace Branch webinar on witnessing enduring documents. On the 30th of November 2020, important reforms to Queensland's guardianship system came into effect. While your witnessing role essentially remains the same, new forms and guides were introduced for making an enduring power of attorney and an advanced health directive. In addition to the new approved forms was the introduction of the Queensland Capacity Assessment Guidelines and a new approved Form 8, additional page. You can make this a more interactive experience, if you wish, by having the following approved forms in reach. Form 2, Enduring Power of Attorney, short form. Form 4, Advanced Health Directive. Form 8, additional page. Form 9, Enduring Power of Attorney Explanatory Guide or the Form 10, Advanced Health Directive Explanatory Guide and finally, the Queensland Capacity Assessment Guidelines 2020. And don't forget that Chapter 4.9, Witnessing General Powers of Attorney, Enduring Powers of Attorney and Advanced Health Directives has been updated and you should also refer to this chapter when witnessing an enduring document. These links to these forms appear in the web page summary below the webinar topic. If you would like to refer to these documents throughout the webinar, please take a moment to pause the webinar to download or view them. By the end of this webinar, you should be able to understand why the reforms were introduced and identify the current approved forms that should be used to make an enduring document. Know what you can and cannot do when you are witnessing an enduring document Learn how to set the scene and develop a rapport with your client. This will help you assess their capacity to make the enduring document. And finally, you should be able to apply the fundamental principle, always assume the adult has capacity before applying the correct legal test of capacity for making an enduring document. If however, by the end of this webinar, you still have unanswered questions, please send us an email and one of our dedicated officers from the community engagement team will be in touch. The previous approved forms for an enduring power of attorney, an EPA, an advanced health directive, an AHD, were in place for more than 16 years. Then, on the 30th of November 2020, new versions were introduced. Only the new versions of the forms are to be used when making an enduring power of attorney. That is, you are not able to witness the previous EPA forms, even if they've been partially completed. And just to recap, an EPA allows a person to appoint someone to make personal and or financial decisions on their behalf, even when they lose capacity. Whereas an advanced health directive allows a person to give directions about their future health care. An AHD only comes into effect when the principal has lost capacity to make decisions about their healthcare treatment. On your screen is the previous version of the AHD, but now if a person wishes to make an AHD, then they can choose to use the new version of this form. And I'll be expanding on the reasoning why a little later in the presentation. These new forms reflect the legislative changes made under the Amendment Act are simpler and more user-friendly, and finally, for the first time, include a separate explanatory guide an adult can use when completing their enduring document. You can, however, continue to certify the old forms, which is covered in our separate webinar, Certifying Copies of Enduring Documents. If you have an explanatory guide in reach, I would ask you to refer to it during the next section. Feel free to also make notes on the guide if you have printed it. The new separate explanatory guide informs users how to complete their EPA or AHD. Both guides include some scenarios, practical tips and a step-by-step -step guide for each section of the EPA or AHD. The guide is primarily used by the adult making the enduring document, however as a witness you will find it a useful tool and it is recommended that you keep a copy of each in your witnessing kit. While I won't go through the guide page by page, here are some key sections for you to refer to. Section 4 in the EPA or Section 7 in the AHD Guide, Declarations and Signatures. Page 17, what to do with your completed EPA or AHD. This information is great to refer your client to. Page 18, how to add additional pages, including the new Form 8. 
page 20, information for the witness, page 25, some commonly asked questions or FAQs on making an EPA or an AHD, and finally, page 27, which has contact information for your client if they need further assistance. Moving on to the new Queensland Capacity Assessment Guidelines 2020, which I will now refer to as the Capacity Guidelines from now on, also came into effect on the 30th of November 2020. The Capacity Guidelines provide general information about capacity, capacity assessment and the legal tests of capacity in Queensland. This guide will be indispensable to you as a witness. The first five sections of the Capacity Guidelines explain what capacity is and how to assess a person's capacity to make day-to-day -day decisions about their personal, health or financial matters. Some examples of these types of decisions include where they live, their day-to-day -day activities, where they work, consenting or refusing medical treatment, depositing money into a bank account and paying everyday living expenses. If you wish to know more about capacity for making decisions, refer to sections 2 to 5 of the capacity guidelines. The section which is relevant to witnessing an enduring document is section 6, assessing capacity to make an enduring document and starts on page 40. This section of the capacity guidelines contains checklists and practical tips for assessing capacity to make an enduring document, as well as referral information for your client if they need assistance in making or completing their enduring document. If I could ask you now to refer to Form 8 additional page, there may be times when your client needs additional space to add more information. For example, they may wish to add more attorneys or add additional terms and instructions than the space on the form allows. To do this, the client can use the new approved Form 8 additional page. An additional page can only be added at the time of witnessing and not afterwards. You are also required to sign the Form 8 and don't forget to include any additional pages of the enduring document when inserting the total number of pages in the witness certificate section. It is not essential to use the Form 8 for additional pages but it makes the process easier for the client. As you can see, Form 8 clearly indicates at the top that it is for an EPA or an AHD and has designated areas for both the witness and the principal to sign. If you have witnessed a Form 8, it is placed at the end of the enduring document, that is, the last page. Now that you have been introduced to the new approved forms, let's look at some of the key differences. As mentioned, the information on how to complete an EPA or an AHD is now combined into a separate explanatory guide. If a person is making an EPA, there are still two approved forms a person can use, depending on how they wish to appoint their attorneys. The Form 2 Enduring Power of Attorney short form should be used if the person wishes to appoint one or more attorneys for personal matters only, or one or more attorneys for financial matters only, or the same attorney or attorneys for both personal and financial matters. If you have the Form 2 in reach, I would ask you to first turn to page 9. Page 9 is the Declarations and Signatures. This is where you witness the principal or an eligible signer for the principal sign the EPA in front of you. You will notice now that the eligible signer, if used, must complete their details upon signing for the principal. Now, if you could turn to page 10, Witness Certificate, this is where you certify that the principal or the eligible signer signed the document in your presence. In addition to inserting your signature, full name and date, you now need to insert the total number of pages the EPA has, including any additional pages. This is where you also confirm your eligibility as a witness, so please do not forget to select the relevant boxes on this page. Whereas, if the adult wishes to appoint different attorneys for personal matters and financial matters, then the Enduring Power of Attorney Long Form, or Form 3, should be used. As you can see, there are only two additional pages to the Long Form compared to that of the Short Form. This is because of the separate appointment of attorneys. If you have the Form 3 in reach, you can see that you are still only required to sign two pages, page 11, declarations and signatures, and page 12, witness certificate. 
there is one very important change to the Powers of Attorney Act 1998 and that is the limit to the number of joint attorneys that can be appointed under an EPA. Joint attorneys must agree on all decisions under the EPA. Amendments to Section 43 of the Powers of Attorney Act 1998 means a principal can only appoint a maximum of four people to make decisions in this way. Otherwise, there is no limit on the number of attorneys that can be appointed in another manner. Finally, all approved forms, including the AHD, require the attorney or attorneys to sign their acceptance after the EPA or AHD has been completed and witnessed. Moving over to the approved form four, Advanced Health Directive. The old form was a lengthy 24 pages and now with the separate explanatory guide, the new form is only 14 pages. Unlike an EPA, there is no formal requirement to appoint an attorney in an advanced health directive, nor must it be in the approved form 4. Let me explain further. Appointing an attorney to make decisions is not mandatory. If an attorney is appointed, it is for personal, including health matters only. If no attorney has been appointed, then this section or the attorney section should be ruled out. Back to the AHD being in the approved form. Under the Powers of Attorney Act 1998, Section 44 lists the formal requirements that are to be met when making an enduring document. Specifically, an enduring power of attorney must be in the approved form. An advanced health directive must be written and may be in the approved form. There is also a further separate formal requirement for an AHD. An advanced health directive must also include a certificate signed and dated by the doctor mentioned in subsection 7, stating that the principal, at the time of making the advanced health directive, appeared to the doctor to have the capacity necessary to make it. This means a person can present an AHD to you in a different format than that of the Form 4. For example, an advanced health directive for mental health. Finally, as previously mentioned, there is no limit to the number of attorneys that can be appointed in an AHD. This brings me to the Advanced Health Directive for Mental Health. This document, which is currently being displayed on your screen, is a combined guide and form and is used by a person wishing to make an AHD that documents their decision surrounding their mental health treatment. The AHD itself is only five pages long and may be presented to you for witnessing without the guide. This is perfectly acceptable. A person can use this form to make an AHD as it is compliant with the Powers of Attorney Act 1998. You can witness this AHD for mental health even though it's not in the approved form for just follow the same witnessing practice as you would for that form. With changes though to legislation this form is currently under review and as a result, Queensland Health has prepared a fact sheet to assist anyone wishing to use this guide and form to make an AHD. Let's move on and talk about your witnessing role. Chapter 4.9 of your handbook has been updated and has detailed information to guide you through the steps of witnessing an enduring document. If you're not familiar with witnessing an EPA or an AHD, then you should refer to this chapter during the witnessing transaction. Essentially, your witnessing role hasn't changed. With the amendments to legislation, you are still an impartial witness and are required to ensure that the adult, also known as the principal, making the enduring document has the capacity to do so. This means the principal must understand the nature and effect of the enduring document and make the enduring document freely and voluntarily. I'm going to explain that a little bit further. It's not enough for the adult to have a general understanding of the enduring document. The law requires them to understand the nature and effect of the enduring document, the power that it gives, when it operates and how, and when they can revoke or cancel it. It must be clear that the adult is not being pressured into making the enduring document. Sometimes a family member, friend or carer may behave in a manner that is domineering or overbearing and is seeking to pressure the principal into making a decision a certain way. You can satisfy yourself that the principal understands the nature and effect of the enduring document and that they are making it freely and voluntarily by setting the scene before conducting the correct legal test of capacity. But before you do this, there are a couple of things to check first. 
Before you witness an EPA, first check that it is in the approved form, which is currently Form 2, Version 4 for the short form, or Form 3, Version 4, long form. Remember, old forms are no longer able to be witnessed. Ask the principal if they have an existing EPA in Queensland or in another state or territory. If they do, explain that by making an EPA, it could affect the validity of the existing EPA. Recommend the principal seek independent legal advice about the effect of making a new EPA. If the principal wishes to proceed with making a new EPA, then you should make a note of this in your logbook. Now you can set the scene and make way for the next part of the witnessing transaction, conducting the capacity assessment. The same principles apply when witnessing an AHD. First, check that the AHD is in the approved form, currently Form 4, Version 5. Remember though, an AHD may be in this approved form. Ask the principal if they have an existing AHD in Queensland or in another state or territory. If they do, explain that by making a new AHD, it could affect the validity of the existing AHD. Recommend the principal seek independent legal advice about the effect of making a new document. If the principal wishes to proceed with making the new AHD, then you should make a note of this in your logbook. Now you can set the scene and make way for the next part of the witnessing transaction, conducting the capacity assessment. If you have completed the online module and read the updated chapter 4.9 of your handbook, you probably would have noticed the terms setting the scene and developing a rapport. If you have been doing this already, that's great because by developing a rapport with your client puts them at ease and will make conducting the legal capacity test a little more comfortable. If you're not sure how to set the scene or develop a rapport with your client, let me show you how to do this. Ideally, you should meet with the adult alone. This gives you an opportunity to develop a rapport with them and make sure that they are not being unduly influenced by another person to make the enduring document. Welcome the principal and introduce yourself. Make them feel comfortable by asking familiar day-to-day -day questions like How is your morning going? Or are you reading any good books lately? When you are speaking with the principal, show genuine interest and use active listening. This means responding to your client in non-verbal ways, like nodding your head or raising your eyebrows. Try not to plan your response while they are talking to you and resist the temptation of reaching out for the client's document. Let them pass it to you. Explain to the principal that you will need to read through their enduring document with them and that you'll be asking some questions about the decisions that they have made in it. Finally, encourage the principal to participate and give them an opportunity to ask questions at any time during the process. It's best to use your own words to explain this to the principal. You can refer to page 46 of the Capacity Guidelines and Chapter 4.9 of your handbook which further explains how to do this. The purpose of asking the principal questions about their enduring document is to engage them in a discussion about their enduring document so you can assess whether or not they understand the nature and effect of their EPA or AHD and whether they are making it freely and voluntarily. By using these simple techniques, you are setting the scene and you are making way for the next part of the witnessing transaction, the capacity assessment. Before I talk about the legal test of capacity, I'd like to talk about the presumption of capacity. Under the General Principles in the Powers of Attorney Act 1998, an adult is presumed to have capacity for a matter. This means you cannot make an assumption about an adult's capacity based on their personal characteristics, such as a disability, mental illness or age. This is a fundamental principle that should be paramount when you are witnessing an enduring document for your client. If you have the capacity guidelines in reach, I would ask you to go to page 48. Here you'll find some great examples of open-ended questions you can ask the principal when you are conducting the capacity assessment. Ideally, you should keep a copy of these guidelines with you when you are conducting it. The Capacity Guidelines also provides checklists, hints and tips for assessing the capacity of a person to make an enduring document. While there is no requirement to use the checklists or keep them, you can do so if you wish. You should make notes about how you conducted the assessment, 
and document the conclusion that you have reached and the reasons for that decision in your logbook. If at the end of the capacity assessment, you conclude that the principal does not have capacity, then do not witness the enduring document. Instead, explain to the principal the conclusion you have reached and that they can seek a capacity assessment from an independent expert, such as a medical professional, the advice of a lawyer about their options moving forward, or a declaration from QCAT about their capacity to make the enduring document. This is where you can refer your client to Appendix A of the Capacity Guidelines, which lists a range of organisations that can offer them assistance or support. Before I finish, I'm going to take a moment to answer some of the top questions we have received since the changes came into effect on the 30th of November 2020. What if I'm asked to make changes to an already witnessed EPA or AHD? An enduring document should not be amended after it has been signed and witnessed. It is not recommended to write on an EPA or an AHD once it has been signed and witnessed. If changes are required, the client should make a new enduring document and revoke the old one. For minor changes like updating an address, the client may not need to make a new document. What if an enduring document is not in the approved form from the website or has a different number of pages? Sometimes when solicitors or the public trustee prepare an enduring document, it can differ in page length or it is formatted in a way that increases the total numbers of pages. Provided that the enduring document is substantially compliant with the approved form, you can still witness it. If you are concerned that the form does not meet the legislative requirements, you could suggest that the person consider seeking independent legal advice about the validity of the document. What if I wish to record the witnessing transaction on my electronic device in place of a written record? It is preferred that you keep a written record, in fact section 443B of the Powers of Attorney Act 1998 recommends the witness makes a written record of the evidence as a result of which the witness considered that the principal understood the necessary matters. To assist you in keeping a written record, you can, if you wish, use the summary checklists found in Section 6 of the Capacity Assessment Guidelines. Page 44 Summary, Assessing Capacity to Make an Enduring Power of Attorney and Page 45 Summary, Assessing Capacity to Make an Advanced Health Directive. Any audio recording may only be made with the consent of the principal or your client. What if the principal or attorneys have already signed the EPA or AHD? To answer this, can I ask you to turn to the witness certificate, which is on page 10 of the EPA short form or page 12 of the AHD. You can see, as a witness, you are certifying that the principal signed this enduring document in my presence or in my presence, the principal instructed another person to sign this enduring document for the principal. And that person signed it in my presence and in the presence of the principal. If the principal has already signed the enduring document, but not the attorney, the unwitnessed signature can be ruled through and initialed by both the witness and the principal. This is consistent with the steps in the general witnessing chapter of your handbook, 4.1. If, however, the attorney has already signed the document, you should not witness it. Let the principal know that the attorney must only sign the original document after both the principal and the witness have signed it. You can refer your client to the attorney's acceptance page where this information is clearly indicated in the side margin at the top of the approved form. What if I'm asked to witness an enduring document online? While legislation has been introduced to allow modified arrangements for witnessing certain documents electronically, for example over an audio visual link such as Skype or Zoom, you are unable to witness documents in this manner at this time. If you have been requested to witness an enduring document or any other document electronically, refer your client to the JP branch. I hope this webinar has given you an overview of the new approved forms. And to sum up, don't forget, you can only witness the approved forms for an enduring power of attorney. The previous approved forms are no longer able to be witnessed. Remember though, you can still certify copies of these previous versions.
Apply the correct legal test of capacity for making an enduring document, while always applying the fundamental principle that the adult has capacity until proven otherwise. Set the scene by developing a rapport with your client. Remember to ask open-ended questions, explain the process to them, and encourage your client to participate by asking their own questions. And finally, keep a copy of the Queensland Capacity Assessment Guidelines in your witnessing kit and refer to Section 6 when you are conducting the legal test of capacity for making an enduring document. Before I go, why not check out our professional development page and if you haven't already, view or download the updated chapter 4.9 of your handbook, Witnessing General Powers of Attorney, Enduring Powers of Attorney and Advanced Health Directives. I'm Belinda Cronell and like the rest of the community engagement team, we are here to help you in your witnessing role. Drop us a line anytime if you have a witnessing question. Thanks for listening and until next time, bye bye.